Welcome back, dear friends. Uh, we'll be discussing a laparoscopic management of a collidocal cyst with a duplication of gallbladder and anomalous cystic duct in insertion. A very interesting case. Case was a two year male child with pain and abdomen on and off initially and had a two acute attacks in one month. The blood investigation ha had a mildly elevated liver enzymes while ultrasonography confirmed a collidocal cyst and MRCP showing type 4 a collidocal cyst but none of the investigations confirming a duplication of gallbladder. On entering an abdomen we had a surgical surprise of a duplicated gallbladder. So we started with the hitch stitch that helped us retract the liver, a hitch stitch with a falciform ligament you can see very clearly using a proline stitch. It would uh, help you avoid an extra port. Next we would uh, do the dissection of the cyst, take away of the tissue which is uh, surrounding the cyst. Here I have taken one more hitch stitch. Now with the cyst, it helps me retract or pull up the cyst so that I can do a proper dissection distally. Dissection distal to the cyst has to be very meticulous and you have to be gentle there. So you can go as distal as possible until you find a tapering of the cyst. So this is the tape where we could, we could find the tapering and decided to clip it and divide the same. So we are using the titanium clips here. Once you have clip the distal end of the cyst and divided it. We then proceed with the dissection posterior to the cyst, taking very good care that the cyst is not adherent with the portal vein with the, uh, the posteriorly, which inadvertently might lead to the trauma of the portal vein. Once we are done with the dissection of the cyst circumferentially and have completely mobilized it, so we then start with the dissection of the gallbladder taking of the peritoneum. We can clearly appreciate here that it is an intrahepatic gallbladder, duplicated gallbladder that is intrahepatic. So there was a single cystic artery that was supplying both the GBs and a single cystic duct opening high up very near to the hilum. So I opened the cystic duct although it was partially opened by the hitch stitch to look for the confluence. It was a grossly dilated cystic duct with a large diameter. I would want to be sure about the confluence. Here we can see the you can see three openings the confluence right and left hepatic duct and the cystic duct that was opening in there so once we are we have dealt with the cystic part now we start mobilizing the duodenum so it is very important to make a duodenotomy or the site of anastomosis as far as possible from the pylorus preferably in the d2 part of the duodenum so second part of duodenum, it would be better to make a duodenos, hep uh, hepatic or duodenostomy. Duodenogastric reflux is one of the major complications of hepatic or duodenostomy. And opponents of hepatic or duodenostomy cite this one of the biggest reasons for not doing the hepatico duodenostomy rather going for hepatico duodenostomy
Next, we start with the anastomosis, uh, the hepatic cord drenostomy, uh, starting with the posterior layer. So in this case, we are doing interrupted sutures using PDS. So we can do it in interrupted fashion, or you can even take a continuous sutures, whatever you are comfortable with. After finishing the posterior layer and uh, anastomosis, so it start with the anastomosis of the anterior layer. Again, in the same interrupted or the continuous fashion. So once the suturing is completed, so this is the final look of the anastomosis it should look like and we have kept a drain in this case for three days. So what we learned from this case is the accurate diagnosing and managing the cystic mass of the bile duct and the anomalies associated with it with a high suspicion of diagnosing of gallbladder duplications intraoperatively and dealing with them if you encounter them as a surprise during the surgery. Thank you so much. Subscribe to the channel and we'll be coming with more interesting cases in future.